welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to bind a quilt using a serger. So to get started, I have cut my binding to my usual size of two and a half inches. If you have a thicker batting, you might want to go a little bit wider, two and three quarter. But for this particular quilt, I'm going to use two and a half inch binding. And I have trimmed my quilt. So I've just trimmed it to get rid of all that excess backing and batting. When you're ready to actually apply your binding, depending on your quilt will depend on what side you actually sew the binding down to. If I am doing a quilt where I'm going to machine sew my binding down later, I'm actually going to, to serge the binding to the back of the quilt and then I'll flip it over to the front and machine sew it. If I'm going to hand sew, I serge my binding to the front of my quilt and then I will flip it over and hand sew it. With a reversible quilt, it doesn't really matter what side you put the binding on. For this particular quilt, I am going to machine sew down my binding once I have it applied. So I am going to serge the binding onto the back of the quilt, then I'll flip it around and machine sew it on the front. So let's get started. So here I am at the serger and I have my serger set up for a four thread overlock. And as you can see on my lower looper, I have put fusible thread. The fusible thread in my lower looper allows me to just fold over the binding when I'm finished serging it on and give it a quick shot with the iron and it will hold that binding there for me while I am sewing it down and whether I sew it by hand or with machine and that just eliminates the need for pins and or clips. So I just love that stuff. Now as for the rest of the setup for my serger, I want to make sure that my differential is in neutral. I have a stitch length of 2.5 and I have a width of seven. Of course, I want to make sure that my blade is up and activated. So we're going to start by sewing our binding together. And we're going to sew it together very similar to how we do on a sewing machine. But what's important to know about a serger is you have your left and your right needle. And they're right in here. The left needle is the first stitch in a overlock. On a regular four thread overlock, this right here that is your left needle. So that is the needle that, that defines the width of the stitch. And this is the line that we want to pay attention to when we are sewing our binding together. So on your presser foot, to be able to help with that, you'll see these two little, little marks here on your presser foot. This one and this one right here. So this one tells me exactly where my left needle is going to be, and this one tells me where my right needle is going to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the area I want stitched with my left needle. So when you're sewing your binding together, normally when we're at a sewing machine, we line up our binding, we sew from corner to corner, and that gives us the binding sewn together in a long strip. When I'm doing it on my serger, I do basically the same thing, but I like to give myself a little bit of about a quarter of an inch or so extra on the top and the bottom. And then what my aim is when I'm sewing it is to aim from this corner directly into this corner. And it just gives me a little bit more of a visual. And I want to line this left needle mark right here with the line that I've drawn on my binding. Now you don't have to draw the line. You can just wing it. But as I'm sewing, I want to line this up right here with that little notch on my foot. I'm just going to push that up. And so. And there you can see. I have the binding set just like I would on a sewing machine. So you're going to continue to sew all your pieces of binding together forever, how long you need it for your particular quilt. And of course, you want to make sure that you have right sides together like this. Give yourself a little bit of space. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this binding to the ironing board and you're going to fold it in half. 
you're going to fold it in half like this. The same way that we do uh, when we are doing binding on a sewing machine, I want to fold in a 45 degree on the front edge of my binding, like that, and then I'm going to press my binding so that I have a finished edge at the start of my binding. So that would be your next step. Go and get your binding pressed, and then we can start sewing it to the quilt. There we are. Now we're ready to start. I have pressed my binding, and I folded myself in a 45 degree and pressed that over. Now I want to start stitching. I want to leave about this much of the binding unstitched. So when I get all the way around to the end, we're going to tuck this the rest the end of the binding into the beginning of the binding. And I want to start on the quilt somewhere about halfway down. I don't want to be too close to a corner so that we don't have to mess with the corner. I want to be down a little bit and then we're ready to start surging. So you're just going to line up all your raw edges just like we do on a sewing machine. And on in this particular instance, I am actually wanting to sew this binding to the back of my quilt because I am going to machine sew this down and when I machine sew it down I prefer to machine sew from the front so I am surging to the back. There we are and I'm just gonna get it ready to set up into my machine. I'm just gonna start stitching and as I'm stitching I'm gonna spin this around there so now I'm actually stitching on my quilt. I'm lining up my raw edges and I'm just skimming the knife. If I cut a little weeny bit off, that's okay. But I want to be right up against that knife and not trim any off. But like I say, if I, if I trim off a little bit, it's okay. It's not a problem. And I'm going to continue stitching and I'm going to stitch all the way down. Now what I want to do is I want to stop about a quarter of an inch from the end, exactly the same as we do when we're sewing on a sewing machine. So I'm going to sew, stitch this until my needles, which are back here, so I'm going to continue stitching until my needles are about a quarter of an inch away and I can see back here that I am one more stitch right there. So my needles there are approximately a quarter of an inch away from the end and then all I'm going to do is just kind of pivot my fabric and sew off the end. So at the end of my quilt here I have a, like a little 45 degree. Then we are going to fold, fold it straight back like that and straight forward exactly the same way we do binding on a sewing machine so that I form that miter and then I'm going to put it back into my serger and I'm going to start stitching right at the end and again I want to make sure that I am skimming that knife And I'm going to keep surging all the way around until I'm a quarter of an inch away from the next corner. that was my last corner so now I am actually coming up to where I had started 
So what I'm going to do is sew until I'm about six inches away. And then I'm just going to slide off the edge here. Sew off the edge, kind of like how we do in the corners. And now what I want to do is join the edges of my binding. So here is the edge where I had started my binding, and that's the 45 degree fold that I had originally made. I just folded that over and then gave it a press. I'm going to lay this down. And then what I want to do is just tuck this one into that one. And I want to have at least an, an inch or so overlap. So I am just going to then cut off my excess binding right there. And I'm going to take that, that one and tuck it into this one. Just like that. Oh, I need to just trim that just a wee bit more. There we go. Lay that one down. Put this one on top. Tuck it in. There. Just like that. I'm just going to stick it back into the serger and I'm just going to finish up that seam. There we go finished now that we're finished putting our binding on with the serger because i used the fusible thread and this is the looper side of my quilt i can then go to the ironing board and if i just apply some heat on that binding the fusible thread will hold that down for me So what I can do is then go to either my sewing machine and just go ahead and top stitch this down or use a decorative stitch and zigzag it down, whatever I want to do. I can then top stitch it from the front. So if I have taken my binding and I'm putting it down over top of the stitching, so it's a little bit longer on the back than it is on the front, I can also just flip to the front and I can stitch in the ditch from this side and I can sew the binding down, but it holds it all in place for me. So I don't have to worry about pins or clamps or um, the little clips. So that's the advantage to using the fusible thread in your lower looper. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish pressing this, this binding down so that I can get this quilt finished. Bye for now. Happy sewing.